I'm Yusai Khan. Welcome to One World. Today we will introduce you to Danish artist Bjorn Winblad, designer, ceramicist, a man who excels in so many creative areas that it is hard to put any one label on his art. Perhaps his true artistry lies in the way he celebrates life through his work. We will also experience this joyous spirit in the Tripoli Gardens, a tranquil refuge and picturesque amusement park that has flourished in the heart of Denmark's capital for more than 140 years. Visiting a Beyond Wienblatt store is a delight. This is one of the three in Copenhagen alone. Here one experiences that special Wienblatt spirit which has enchanted people around the world for decades. Nicknamed Mr. Denmark, Bjorn is perhaps Denmark's best-known designer. I visited him at the Blue House, his lovely home and workshop located on the outskirts of Copenhagen. He invited me into his studio where we talked of his career while he worked on several of his latest works of art. If there is one trademark characteristic of Bjorn's work, it is the moon-faced child. This figure dominates his designs in all media going to make the face and to sign it. You know, whatever in this house, they love, make lots of things. And as I'm so often away, I also make things from my, the people who work with me. But whatever I have signed with my whole name, oh. I have done myself, and I have done this myself. So I love the circle. So whenever I, I, I start, you know, when I sit down making a ceramic, I mean, I do so many things, but when I do a ceramic piece, I want to decorate it. I always start by sitting down without having any idea what I want to do on it. I mean, on a plate. And then I do a circle, and the moment I've done the circle, it gives me an idea about the impression I wanted to, to have and things like that. And, and do I you know. think it's Danish to be happy? I mean, you, you, uh, all your expressions are very happy. How Danish is that? Uh, I think you are right. I think Danes are uncomplicated. I mean, of course not everybody, but I think it is a very, a very uh, great part of our nature to be uncomplicated. Bjorn creates an enormous number of ceramic sculptures which are molded and manufactured by craftsmen he employs in three workshops. Bjorn, is there any piece that has been sold more than anything else, you know? Yes, of course, but I, I really don't know anything about it. I believe those have been sold many, 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 but most of all, I think, are the horses, which I did many, many years ago, and they are representing, they're done in another, in my old house, in another workshop, and they are done, you see, without me. These works are no ordinary knick-knacks sold to the average tourist, but expensive art objects whose prices range up into the thousands of dollars, they are sold throughout the world. I asked Bjorn why he chose to be an artist. When I was a child, Christmas evening in my grandmother's house, everybody was anxious what was in my packages because I did Christmas gifts the year around for all my cousins, my aunts, and I still think I'm still that child Bjorn who wants to make other people happy. And they open the package and say, wow. It, it sounds terrible by now, but it is yeah. true, I'm afraid. <laughs> now I sign it. You sign your name. <laughs> Besides his diverse ceramic works, Bjorn creates a lot of other things. For example, his poetry. He is very well read and is extremely knowledgeable about music and dance. He has designed stage sets and costumes for many operas, plays and ballets. People often ask me, what do you like most to do? Do you like to make stage design? Do you prefer to do posters? Do you like to do ceramics? Do you like to do porcelain? Do you like to do textile? And it's very funny, you know, it's a question like if you ask a mother, whom of your children do you love do you most? Like them? They will say, <clears throat> well, I like them. I love them all, but I like them in a different way. What makes your work so very popular internationally, you think? I don't know. Maybe it is by happiness doing them, which people can feel. You know, as you have seen in the other part of this house, I'm a great collector. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's a miracle. 
when I find an old thing, when I find, for instance, a pre columbian thing, when I can take a thing many hundred years old in my hand and I can feel the whole pleasure the man had when I did it. That is, for me, so fantastic. And that's the reason I, I collect. I feel suddenly, well, here I am. This man did that 1400 something. He's my friend. We have the same happiness. And that I think is fantastic. Bjorn owns a large collection of Chinese porcelain, sculpture, and furniture, which fills one of the rooms in his home. The art of the Orient has greatly influenced his own design work. Despite his international fame and success, Bjorn remains a generous and warm human being. He's always giving of himself, whether it is making a plate to give to a close friend as a wedding present, or designing a poster for a worthy cause. This one is perhaps his favorite, the one he designed for this Tivoli. This Jürgen, holding up Tivoli as a gift to everybody. And I did two posters. I did one Tivoli during the day, where they have pantomime on the, on the wonderful Chinese theater, mm -hmm. and when they have lots of people, balloons and things, and another Tivoli during the night, when they have ballet and firework and things. And I did that so he could choose, but then they printed both of them. A bird. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm very happy with it. Tiffoli Gardens is a haven for the people of Copenhagen, a place where they can escape from the hectic pace of urban life. Tiffoli is open only four and a half months per year from late spring to early autumn due to the long winter in Copenhagen. On an average day, 25,000 residents of Copenhagen visit the park. They are joined each day by another 25,000 visitors from foreign countries. The total number of visitors reach 5 million per season. These pleasure seekers spend almost $60 million in Tivoli each year. Mr. Jan Kaiser, director of Tivoli, told me about the history of this delightful place. When, when Tivoli was built in 1843, Copenhagen was a very small city surrounded by big walls to protect us against the British and the Swedish who tried to <laughs> come and take over. And just out of the western gate leading into Copenhagen was a fortification. And that's exactly where we are now. Copenhagen has developed around Tivoli. So now we are in the very center. I mean, I look over to the town hall tower from here, and we are in the very center. I wondered how many of the original buildings remained. You want me to give you the complete truth? No. <laughs> yes. Nothing. Nothing. Because it was built by wood and, and uh, canvas. And, and uh, you know, the fact was that when, when uh, Mr. Carstensen, who did the whole thing, uh, was allowed to build up the Tivoli Garden, as I told you, it was built on the fortification. And in the contract he did with the king, the king gave the ground, the land to him, was said that he should, everything should be taken away if another war came up. So it was all made by very light material. But a house that the one here behind us, Nim, looks very much like the first buildings in Tivoli, because Carstensen grew up in Algeria. His father was a general counselor there. So the whole thing was based upon an inspiration from the Far East. A hundred and ten years ago, another architect drew his inspiration from even farther east, China. This outdoor pantomime theater is brightly decorated and ornamented in a fantastic Chinese style. Above the stage, there is a plaque inscribed with a Chinese saying, happiness together with people, a fitting motto for this wonderful park. In another part of Tivoli, there is also a Chinese pagoda. Mr. Kaiser had a very special story to tell about the structure. We had the honor that the Chinese minister president visited the Tivoli garden, and I walked around with him, just as I have been walking around with Queen Elizabeth and with the president of the United States. Everybody comes to the Tivoli garden, and we spend a nice evening here, and when we walk around the garden, I was very 
proud to show him <laughs> our two Chinese people named the theater and the pagoda. Mm -hmm. And I said, Mr. President, this is the Chinese pagoda. And he looked at that, and then he turned around to me rather seriously, and then he said, Mr. Kaiser, this is not a Chinese pagoda, because a Chinese pagoda has to have seven levels, and yours has only four. Uh -huh. And I said, I must excuse you very much. It is a <laughs> Danish Chinese pagoda. <laughs> I also strolled around the garden and was entranced by the lush foliage and the beautiful flowers. For the moment, I almost forgot I was in the middle of a large modern city. There is a genteel, warm human element that is uniquely Tivoli. How do they do it? Twenty-five gardeners are working day in and day out. The flowers is a very important part of the Tivoli atmosphere and it has always been. So we have our own fields in Holland where the Tivoli uh, flowers are being prepared for next year. No uh, tulips blooms more than one year. Then we take them away and give them to the people in the garden and we put new tulips in, 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 in the autumn. Tivoli offers so many kinds of, of, of uh, uh, adventures to people. I mean, if you just want to walk around and enjoy life, you can go around the little Tivoli lake and there are no rides, there are no music, there are no entertainment, but it's a beautiful flower garden in the city. We have a regulation, you won't find a neon light here. Everything is false yes. because that is charming and we don't like the white neon light. There are two things we don't accept in the Tivoli garden. We don't accept neon light and we don't accept recorded music. You won't find any loudspeaker playing recorded music. All music in Tivoli is live music. And I have 200 musicians on the contract playing around in the garden, symphonic music in the concert hall and so on. So uh, maybe I could say that we try to stick to the real life. How would you describe Tivoli? Is it an amusement park or is it more than that? We take much care to keep the tradition, uh, culture, a lot of good music and all the best entertainment. It's a quiet place. We take much care that people can enjoy life in any way they want it. To me, it's one of the, the, of, of the most important things, administrating the Tivoli Garden, that you can go here tonight at 10 o'clock and you can bring your five years old child and uh, you can give him a ticket and he can go to the right or he can walk around completely safe in the garden, uh -huh. in the middle of a modern city where it could be a little dangerous to do that. Now what can one find at the Tivoli? A gorgeous flower garden and lake, a place to see ballet and hear classical music, an amusement park with 25 exciting rides and numerous games. A place to have a delicious meal in any of the 20 restaurants. And four nights a week, at closing time, there is a wonderful display of fireworks. The explosives are manufactured in a factory owned by Tivoli, and several tons of rockets and flares are ignited in a fiery spectacle. Tivoli Garden celebrates life. It is a place where people can enjoy the simple pleasures of being alive. Laughter, beauty, friendship and peace. Well, it's almost midnight now and Tivoli continues to entertain visitors with its seemingly inexhaustible supply of pleasures. However, we have exhausted our supply of time. So that's our show for tonight. I'm Yusai Khan from the heart of Copenhagen, Denmark, for One World.